Hi, I'm Jay Lee. I'm here to talk to you about pediatric knee injuries, specifically the ACL today. My interest is pediatric sports medicine. I do have a disclosure. I do get research support in terms of my ACL biomechanic testing. And so today's case is a 10-year-old male who sustained a injury during basketball. He jumped, he landed, his knee twisted, and he had some pain and swelling. He gave it about a week and then returned to basketball and noted his knee felt unstable and it gave way again. When he saw us, we noticed that he had a large amount of swelling in his knee. The ACL test, the Lachman's test, demonstrated some asymmetry between the right and the left knee. And we also noted he was small compared to his parents. He was prepubescent. He hadn't gone through puberty in his growth spurt yet. We got some x-rays. These x-rays don't show too much except for in this case, you can really uh, make out the growth plate, which is here in the femur and here in the tibia. And that's a concern when you're thinking about treating a patient with an ACL tear who's not yet done growing. We got an MRI, and this x-ray here is just for orientation. This is looking at the knee from the side. Uh, these MRI images are looking, again, from the side. In this case, the femur is up here at the top, tibia is down below, and here is the PCL, the sister ligament of the ACL. The ACL in this case is missing. Typically you would see the ACL coursing across in this direction. And so he was diagnosed with an ACL tear. And so what do we do for a 10 year old with an ACL tear? You can consider starting some physical therapy. You can fit him with one of the many ACL braces that we have on the market. You can start with both one and two, or you can consider ACL surgery. So what is the ACL? We all know the ACL is important for pivoting and cutting. It actually prevents shift of the tibia or shin bone uh, anteriorly or forward in relationship to the femur or thigh bone. It's also important for rotation and for varus and valgus stress. It protects the knee and protects the meniscus and the cartilage. It's important for preventing arthritis. And so what are the symptoms of an ACL tear? Well, the signs and symptoms are pretty similar to what this patient experienced. Oftentimes, there'll be a contact or non-contact injury with some twisting of the knee. The patient will oftentimes know to pop some deep pain and swelling. And oftentimes, if they return to play, they'll find that their knee is unstable. On exam, you'll notice a large amount of swelling or effusion, like we did in this patient. And you'll have your Lachman's and pivot shift test to determine whether or not the knee is stable. In terms of our pediatric patients, I find that the Lachman's is probably the easier of the two tests. That pivot shift requires a completely relaxed patient and it's more useful in the operating room. Why do we get an x-ray? So the x-ray is more useful for determining if there are other injuries or a different injury masquerading as an ACL tear. We use it to rule out fractures around the knee. At Hopkins, we've also described a way to determine how skeletally mature a patient is, meaning how much growth do they have left based off of the appearance of the growth plates on the x-ray. Why do we get an MRI? The MRI is also useful for, again, determining whether or not a patient has an ACL tear. Again, the absent ACL on this MRI. Also, notice the bruising pattern. The bruising pattern here is characteristic of an ACL tear. Other reasons to get an MRI is to rule out other injuries. In this one patient's case, they also had a tear to one of the collateral ligaments, the LCL. And again, uh, at Hopkins, we've described ways to look at the growth plate on MRI as well to determine how much growth the patient has left. So what are our treatment options? Well, for non-surgical treatment, oftentimes our partial ACL tears, patients who have part of their ACL still intact, will benefit from bracing and some activity modification. We tell our patients to avoid cutting and pivoting sports, and some of our low-demand patients uh, 15 to 20 percent of them actually do pretty well. Those are our copers. In terms of surgery, uh, historically we recognize that patients are still growing and the techniques that we had in the past required us to delay surgery because in this case of a 17 year old their growth plates are no longer there. They're not as visible and they're quite visible on this 10 year old here. But we found that if we delayed surgery oftentimes our patients would present later once they were done growing for their ACL surgery and have a significant amount of meniscus and cartilage damage. They would essentially have some arthritis already.
This is a traditional treatment for an ACL tear. This is what we still do in some adults. In this case, we've drilled tunnels and put in screws in the femur and in the tibia. In between, we've passed a new ACL. In our 10-year-old, this concept wouldn't work because the screws and the tunnels would be across their growth plate. This would cause the leg to grow at an angle. Instead, we have other options for treating an ACL. This here utilizes the IT band. This IT band is passed outside of the knee and then slid through without any tunnels, without any sockets, without any screws. This here is called an all epiphyseal reconstruction. In this case, the sockets are drilled here and drilled here. This preserves the growth plate and avoids or minimizes any growth plate disturbance. And so currently, our current approach to patients who have an ACL tear, who are still growing, we oftentimes will not delay the ACL reconstruction. And then we'll utilize one of these techniques to avoid disruption to the growth plate. These patients will oftentimes require us to continue following them as they continue to grow, just to make sure they don't have any growth disturbance. So back to our patient. Our patient's 10, still growing, and enjoys being active, playing basketball and baseball. He does a lot of cutting and pivoting, and so which of these options uh, is the right one for him? It's actually a combination of all of them. Physical therapy is important even before an ACL injury because it's been found to improve coordination, balance, and strength, and in that way reduce the risk of an ACL tear to begin with. It's also important after an injury because re-tear rates are pretty high and physical therapy can help reduce that rate. In terms of bracing, bracing is useful before surgery just to remind a patient to take it easy and prevent any further injury. It's also useful after surgery. Even though it's not enough to prevent a future ACL tear, it may benefit a patient in terms of helping them move better. And by moving better, we think the risk of an ACL tear is less. So, what is ACL surgery? ACL surgery is typically outpatient. You miss about five days of school, you use crutches for a little bit, um, and then you wait and rehab your knee and get back to sports, typically around that nine month mark. So in terms of addressing the ACL, there's lots of different ways to go about it. In this case, this is an arthroscopic picture. In this patient, we decided to leave the ACL alone. He had a meniscus tear that we treated at the same time, but his knee was otherwise stable. This here, this is the ACL, and this is sort of a schematic of what we're looking at. We're looking at the thigh bone here in the background, and down here would be the shin bone or tibia. So in terms of replacing the ACL, we talked about lots of different techniques, but in this case, this patient was missing an ACL, which should course across there, and we took an IT band from this patient's knee and replaced that ACL. You can also supplement an ACL. In this case here, we have a patient with a torn ACL, at least a portion of it, and in the background, you actually have intact tissue. So in this case, we took out this torn portion here and left the intact tissue in place. We think this might have some proprioceptive benefit. If you look here, we have new graft supplementing his native tissue. So you have the best of both. You have the robust structure from the additional graft, but you also preserve some of the nerve endings that comes through the native tissue. In terms of repairing an ACL, there are certain situations where actually fixing the native tissue does well. Again, this is a normal knee. This is somewhat a confusing picture because in this case, in this one patient, the ACL actually tore off of the tibia. The whole piece is elevated, it's bloody, we actually see some exposed bone underneath, and the ACL itself is up here. It's intact, but its attachment is not. And in this case, you can take this whole piece and bring it down. By bringing it down, you retension that ACL. And here's a final option. This is actually why I have a disclosure in this presentation. So we're looking at retentioning here at Hopkins, and I put a question mark here because we're still studying it. In this particular case, 
there was a torn ACL which we created and some intact ACL here. What we did is we went ahead and then detached this intact ACL and we went ahead and took this core, this tissue here, and we reoriented the native tissue. By taking that core, we rotated it to recenter the ACL and we pulled it to recreate the tension. And that, as we found so far, does recreate the biomechanics of the knee. The benefit of this would be that the native tissue is still intact. And again, we believe that keeping the native tissue preserves the nerves and maybe some proprioception. So back to our patient. We're able to get him back to basketball and baseball. He's now grown and post pubescent and he had an IT band reconstruction, this construction here. This is his picture, which I'd shown before. This is his new ACL. This is his IT band. And this is his most recent x-ray. I'll continue to follow him for another year or two as he continues to grow. But this picture here shows that his growth plates are symmetric, uh, right versus left. So for our patient, we're able to get him back to basketball and baseball and get him back to the sports that he loves without any issues with growth. If you're a patient or if you have a patient with an ACL tear and you have questions, please reach out.